keep Ryan. God knows we all need our coffee. And people who don't, well, I don't trust them. Not for a second. <laughs> my next poem is called This Is My Modern Reality. This is my modern reality. I find myself breathing the air of the future amidst a tangle of devices, lit screens aglow. They wait patiently for thine input. Figures, they dance before me, on Xbox, on TV, beckoning me to take a break, to spend, 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 so as I can. Kill, 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 digitize facsimiles. Distract me from the feelings within. Distract me from the fleeting moments of living. I always feel like I am dying. This is my modern reality. Future bound. Surround sound, wireless, until there's nothing else holding whatever this is all together. Disillusion. There is no escape from it in my modern reality. 30 second blurbs in which little be their meaning. Life continuing, trying to make sense of existing in the brutal jungle of concrete and machines, American industry, American reality, my modern calamity. I get off on radiation just for kicks, standing in front of an operating microwave. Reflections made for later, after the consumption of GMO made for TV dinner, steak, Salisbury with gravy. Is this the future I am tasting between heaping helpings of advertising? Is this the meaning I seek in essential oils? My bedroom smells funereal. Frankincense. Three wise men, three looming pines. I am making sense of darkness before the arrival of the Herald of Dawn. It will not be long now until the world ends and we can go to wherever it is that we belong. Might I be wrong, but nothing about this existence seems like it should be. The world, it is changing, and I am doing all I can to make sense of this modern reality, my modern reality, our modern reality. When I think about all this technology that we have at our fingertips, it makes my head spin. Back in the early 90s, we were the computer family. We had a Apple Macintosh, and uh, all the rednecks around town really looked up to us. And anytime they had any problems, they came to us. But at the same thing, uh, they just always treated me like an outsider. That's because I was. I didn't belong. And I kept writing poems, and they kept telling me that I was stupid and to stop wasting my time. While others said, oh, this guy's going places. I thought he's, you know what? When you become a millionaire, I want to live. I want, uh, can you buy me a car? Like, Fuck you, dude. No. Actually, at the time, I was like, yeah, I'll take care of everybody. Yeah, sure, why not? And here I am out here in Spokane. Living a very fulfilling life as a poet with my beautiful girlfriend, Sophia. And now the world is opening up and I can finally have more opportunities. And any opportunity there is to read poetry, I'll be there. Within reason. <laughs> this one's called Trust in the Heart. I don't know what to do. What to tell you that is going to satisfy you because I don't know the answers to all the right questions. Though I may be able to point thee in what could be the right direction towards prosperity, the society of magnanimity. Though honestly, if I could find it myself, I would probably be there already. Golden gates of wisdom glistening, effulgent, effulgent in the sun, mother of pearl inlays, florid warm in the noonday heat. These hues, may they bring you the peace that you seek if they will ever be discovered. They must be uncovered by way of due diligence, not, by, not simply by the manifest pointing finger of providence. It should be obvious, but to many, their vision, it be clouded. 
perpetually, eternally, in the fog. One must not grant trust to ocular acuity. Trust in the heart, beyond the scope of brain-bound corporeal logic. Cold, computative reasoning, calculating every possibility until it is impossible to continue without stepping on your own shoes. I don't know what to do. What about you? What about the truth that lies within you? Obscured though it may be, an impossibility it may seem. Follow the lights of thy distant dream, and so the pathway it may be revealed. This next poem I wrote at the bus station downtown, Spokane. That's uh, one of the different types of poems I do. I write some uh, at home, reflectively, by myself. And then other times, if I go somewhere I know I'm going to be waiting, I will bring a pad or something, and I will write. I was stuck on a bench, the Sprague Avenue waiting area. I am at the bus terminal, seated upon bench. In time, thy bus will come. And meanwhile, I'm on a wrought iron bench painted burnt umber. I'm writing and watching the folks as they move by living their American lives. Not enough small bills. I make change to deliver a dollar to an enthusiastic panhandler or tweaker. The automatic door, it opens and closes and unleashes an intermittent puff of frigid air of winter. Don't you wish that life could be simpler? But I hear no answer. I am silently screaming at an assortment of gods. They say, spare the rod, spoil the child, but I know all well what happens when one is so struck down in body and spirit. Listening to the quickening rumble of engines so numerous, leaving posts on Instagram, tis a trail of digital breadcrumbs. Tell the tale of thy travels, the plot to shall unravel as a ball of twine in time. Where will the path of life take us before the sun finally sets on our horizons? Will there finally be a glimpse of meaning and truth behind the breaking clouds? No answer. People are walking around me so closely I can touch them. I feel for them. Those whose spirits are stricken. I try to listen. I am fishing for their emotions. Terminal, freezing, sitting by the doors amongst the murmurs. Tis early morn and the people are still sipping their steaming coffees. And I am still deciding whether to ride north or west. I sigh and reflect and continue to wait for thy bus to arrive. And that's the end of that poem. So the next, thank you, thank you. I like to write poems, little uh, snapshots of Spokane, life in the city, in the suburbs, in nature. And other times I go home and I just want to smoke some weed. Being bipolar, it helps a lot with uh, my symptoms. So that leads me to my next poem, Green be my air. Chilled morning bright at my window. Time has passed. We are in between winter and spring. There are, in fact, birds and they are chirping the world itself. Be increasingly illuminated until the contents of my brain box pain me. Dull throb, pulse, swallowing generic aspirin. Mornings be the time in which I write. Not the time I'd like, I would prefer to say, I prefer the night. The night, but it, it is no longer mine. I am too sick. Not too old, but definitely too sick to maintain my old schedule. That which existed before the long ride out west. The party days and nights were long. And now they're gone, despite the fact I haven't stopped smoking voluminous quantities of cannabis. Green be my air until I can no longer breathe on my own. 
skulking solemnly, writing and typing poetry and recording videos for the public consumption. I am watching the rising sun unprotected. It deadens the eyes until blue skies die to gray and blue swirl, blinking off in between rasping coughs, trying to contain the real air, that which is present in my lungs, to deaden and yet amplify what was already there. Green be my air. Do you care if I borrow your lighter? I shout, return it whence I came. Return it, will he? I think not. I toss back my hair in an effort to avoid setting my wayward curls aflame again. Tis a shame to forever be so sick from dysfunctional metabolism, dysfunctional gut, dysfunctional brain. Explain to me your grand plans now that you have been smoking. Your grand plans to save humanity. Your grand plans to invent the greatest invention. Your grand plans to end the foreign wars and maybe more? And I reply, well, that's fantastic. Now, are you going to keep talking or will you hit the pipe and pass it? There. Right. Get a sip and I get some coffee. Let's we'll see if anyone else wants to read again. Just check. Anybody want to read? We got uh, six minutes left. <laughs> I, I have a, a haiku. Oh, that'd be great. Mm. Right. Here, come on. Once again, Mr. Brian. Done. We get it, poets. Things are much like other things. Your work here is done. <laughs> they say brevity is the soul of wit. Couldn't be truer in that moment. I want to thank everybody again for coming out. Fantastic. I love to read poetry. It's my one of my jobs as a literary aficionado to try to get more people as excited about poetry as I am. It's an uphill battle, but I am here. I'm here and I'm doing it. So that has led to quite a few of the old timers taking me aside after shows and things and saying, you need to calm down, simmer down a little bit. You don't need to do all that. You know, you need, you don't need to do all that. The, the thing with your hands, don't do that. Well, I'm going to do whatever I want. Woo. I'm not going to read like this. And um, yes. Okay, this is called The Marketplace. The spirit of winter be waning. I am frozen though in motion. I'm writing my warnings away beneath cloud break. Numbness felt it gives way to sensitivity. Everything is magnified. In sickness and in health, I go to the same well as all the other villagers, all the other denizens. I am pillaging ideas. The soul caravan, it cometh home. We are not alone in this terrifying world. Grant me thou trade secrets, all the locations of hidden oasis, in the desert of everlasting blame, and the steppes, the windswept plains. Welcome to the literary game, treasure hunters, scholars, all they are gathered in the courtyard. Under copper green spires, kindling fires, roasting skewers, and braziers. The colorful tents, the parchment market, the contents of scrolls are extolled, legends so rich and passed along in script and in song. We are not long for this world. Money changers, they hide their coin purses. Thank you. Well, I guess uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out here. Madco Lab Studios, First Friday, Celestial Beans Coffee. Woo! 
I'm so thankful that there's a place out here for dudes like me, people like me, come out here and spread the word, the literary word. I am hopeful that this will continue next month and uh, possibly it will be a general open mic where uh, people will be able to come in and if they want to play music, do comedy, they have a hidden talent, they come in and do that. And I think uh, and it will open up to some more people. But either way, I'm happy to come out here and do this. I want to thank Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody. Matco Lab Studios, first Friday. Yes. Thank you.